What's up everybody? My name is Ron Empire and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to regress our new player's guide on the topic of gardening. In the first half of this video I will tell you everything I know about gardening and show you my various farm designs from my Twitch world and offline world. This will include some late game content as a preview for what you can expect later on in your progression. I will also demonstrate how the farming loot works with zero downtime to gain continuous gardening experience points. Okay, so in the second half of this video, I will do the actual Let's Play session for setting up the early farm using the YouTube character that was created for this new player's guide series. While doing this, I will give you my tips and insights on the best and most efficient farming method to power your gardening skills to 100. Now, if you don't want to see the uh, Let's Play session of this video, you can totally skip that. Just check out the uh, description for this video and use the chapter jump to get tips that you need and uh, totally avoid the um, the let's play if you want to. Alright, so let's get started. So I'll uh, start off with showing you the uh, Twitch world using my Twitch character. My, my Twitch character actually has reached level um, 100 so I can actually do a full rundown on the talent for you guys. Alright, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at the gardening skill itself. Okay, so at a at a hundred maxed out, you get forty percent extra harvest chance. Now, what extra harvest chance means is that when you um, harvest a crop or a plant of some sort, you actually have a chance to get an extra uh, plant. So instead of getting one back from the harvest, you could potentially get two, and that's what the harvest chance means. And at the start of the game, it's it's pretty low. I think it's like point point four for uh, for level one. So that's pretty low, right? So to get forty percent, you actually have to get this to hundred. Now, it's possible to increase this uh, harvest chance by wearing um, equipment that you can find later in the game. This is very later in the game. Um, so let me go and show you that bit. The farmer's hat. The petal ring. Now, if you get two of these petal rings, you can stack it. So, adding this and this and this up uh, comes out to be 55.5. Okay, so let's look at the character here. Um, and the character stats right here, scrolling down, shows that I have 40% extra harvest chance. And that actually comes from this um, here. And so, when I wear these items, Okay, I can increase that to 95.5. As you can see, it's possible to reach 95.5 by um, finding these items later in the game. These are very late game content. Okay, this drops off of the uh, Caveling Gardener in the uh, Asius's Wilderness. And uh, these come from the large yellow petals and Asius's Wilderness as well. Now, uh, you can check out some of the short clip videos where um, where, where you'll find the, the, the drops actually show up when I kill the gardener, and you'll see also in my short clips um, where the petals actually drop as well. So that is the, the gardening equipment that you can use to raise the skill. All right, so now in my... Um, my starting guide at the very beginning, and I talked about the, the talents, and I'd mentioned that you know 100 points divided by 5 equals to 20 talent points. Um, I, I, I was slightly wrong in the sense that you do get an extra 5 points when you reach level 100. So it's not 20, it's not 20 points of talent, it's, uh, it's technically 25. So you have to reach level 100 to get the last five free points. So at like, you know, 95, you're only gonna get 19 points. And at uh, 100, you'll get six points, right? One for the 100 skill, and then five for just reaching one, an extra five for reaching 100. So what did I do with those points? Well, I spent, obviously I, I dumped it in here, because you can't, you know, you can't spend it any other point otherwise without going through the first node. And then I went this way, 
for the, um, the extra 25% food when eating plants or cooked food. So whenever you, what this means is that whenever you eat food, you actually get an extra uh, food percentage. So for example, you know, this is like 28, um, you get 25% more of that, okay? Now this here is thorn, um, thorns. I, I like thorns damage because when the mobs attack you, they can actually get hit with thorns by 50, uh, 50 thorn damage points. So this only happens when the, when you're getting attacked. This here I didn't put points into because I feel like that's completely useless because if you spend all five points in there, you actually get a 50% chance of not consuming water from your watering can. Um, and then this one here, I decided to go with this one because it does uh, crit hit damage. And it looks like I actually proc crit hit damage quite frequently uh, compared to the uh, a 25% you know um, damage against poison target because I actually have to apply poison um, to get that um, you know extra damage. Now you know you'd have to you have to uh, to get this and this you have to go through this and that's the only annoying part. So if you want the poison chance um, skill right, 25% ch chance to apply poison, you have to go through this. So that's that's the only downside of this being right here, or, or to getting this, is you have to waste an extra five points to get this. So that, I'm not too too crazy about that part. Um, but And there are ways to actually apply poison in the game. You, there's a blow dart that you can use. There's the poison sickle that you can use, and also the toxic defender that you can use to apply poison damage. So that's why I, I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with this and I decided to go with this because this this procs quite frequently actually. So getting at an extra 25% crit damage is pretty useful. And then I obviously I went with gardening or the expert gardener because this gives me the golden plants. Now a lot of times when I, I was streaming online or during, on my Twitch and everyone's asking what are these golden plants right here? Um, it comes from this. So you actually have to get to level, I think level, um, level 80? Yeah, level 80 to be able to put points into this, right? I believe it's eight, 80. Yep, so 80, 85, 80, 85, 90, and then 95, and then 100, yeah, to put the full, full point into, or full five, full five into this. So it starts at, at 80 in order to get to this. Uh, it's actually really worth it. So I, I really highly recommend this because the um, the crop that you get are rare. That's what the golden are. And so when you mix two golden items together for cooking, you, you actually get like a rare cooked item. And then you can technically get that to epic level if you um, if you spec this here. In it. Um, in, in the, the cooking trait. So cooking, you can level up fairly quickly here with uh, with gardening. So these two, and, and of course, this is how I end up, you know, um, completing my, my cooking was just basically powering my way up to gardening. And then with all the, with all the um, crops I got, I end up using that for, for cooking. So these two pretty much go hand in hand. Uh, so I'll, I'll do a different video guide on cooking later, but for now, I just wanted to talk about the gardening uh, talent tree. And uh, then let's go ahead and talk about the the equipment for gardening. Okay, now this here is the copper hoe. You're going to need that to basically prepare the ground for, for uh, farming. This is something that you can either get from the gardening skill, or sorry, the gardening background at the start of the game. Now, if you use my gardening or my character creation trick, where you create the gardener, drop the hoe into the game, and then exit the game, or sorry, exit the world and create a new character, you could get the gardening hoe for free without taking the gardening um, background. So, if you remember watching my video, I demonstrate how to get this and this for free without crafting it. And then the next item up is the tin hoe, and then the one after that is the iron hoe. So uh, functionally, these all these hoes work exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you're using this or this, 
they all work the same. The only difference is in the durability. So for this here, you can say use it, you know, uh, 10 plots or whatever, you know, I, I, I forgot the number. Um, I think it might be like 80 or no, not 80. Um, I can't remember. Probably like 20 or four, uh, 30 plots or something before it breaks in terms of durability. And then uh, you have to repair it again. This is similar to this. You have a certain amount of time that you can dig up the ground before it breaks. Now in the demo version, they didn't have that dur uh, durability going to zero where you can repair the stuff. So when the durability hits, hits zero, you actually completely uh, lose the item. It gets completely destroyed. So now that they've added in the early access uh, a repair option, you, you really want to get the iron hoe uh, because then you can just repair it whenever it's it's broken or the, whenever the durability reaches zero. And so now this actually is very useful uh, compared to this because uh, before, uh, if, if this reaches zero and it, it completely breaks, it, you have to like craft a new one. And it wasn't really worth crafting a new iron hoe because you consume iron over and over. And so it was a lot cheaper to craft the, the copper hoe back then. So right now, I would highly recommend getting the iron hoe over the copper hoe, but at the start of the game, you know, if, if all you've got is the iron hoe, just use that and then uh, use a salvage and repair station just to repair it every time it goes to zero. All right, so the next item up, um, or the watering can. Okay, so this one has, the watering can that you start off with has a fullness of 100. That's basically how many units of water it holds, right? And this and the watering can holds 100 units. Uh, the large watering can, requires iron and it holds three times as much this actually works really well you don't really need the large water watering can and i'll show you why and how um, so each plant consumes five units of, of water which means that with one can you can you can plant 20 do 20 plants um, before having to refill it and this obviously does 60 plants which is great, you know, but if you design your farm in such a way where at the end of your, your farming round, you just refill it, this actually is still pretty decent. You don't, it, it doesn't really take a whole lot of time um, to refill this. And I'll show you how to set up the farm in such a way that this is just some quick, easy task, you know, in, in terms of refilling. So, I mean, the large watering can is, is also great. So if you, if you have the extra iron, uh, definitely go for this. It just reduces, you know, the time that it takes for you to go water, or sorry, refill. All right, so now that we've talked about the equipment, let's talk about all the seeds that are available or the plants that's available in the game. Uh, one of the early, early plants that you'll start off with is the root seed. And this is just for setting up like a wood farm. You really don't gain a whole lot of or, or any really for gardening uh, skill points. Uh, with this because it, it would require you to dig up the actual roots uh, itself to be able to get the gardening skill up. And if you do that, you actually lose your, your wood farm. So it's really not advisable to you know level up your gardening skills just digging up the root seeds. Just you know harvest your plant or chop your wood and move on and leave this leave the actual root itself alone. So this is something you could do with gardening but uh, it doesn't really give you much EXP unless you dig up the root. All right, so here, the, um, the six plants that you're normally gonna be working with will be the heartberry seed, the bomb pepper seed, the glow tulip seed, the karok seed, and the fiber seed, which is called the kapok uh, seed, the grub kapok seed. And this is the puffungi seed, which is very late game, this is very late game content, and I'll, I mean I'll show you I'll show you the plant itself, and uh, I'll show you you know how how you grow it, and where you you get the um, the ground tile for it, uh, or I'll tell you where to, where to get it, and I'll show it to you on this uh, on this farm here. But uh, this is very late game, and we won't be messing around with that too much when I do my let's play uh, for you. And this obvious these two obviously I've explained to. You. Uh, in my earlier 
a new player's guide, the Karak seed was found in the uh, stone biome, and it can only be um, grown on uh, the stone tiles. The uh, the fiber seed, the grub uh, kapok seed, this uh, basically creates uh, fiber, but you don't eat fiber. So this is not something that you want to grow um, over time uh, too many of, because the game, as of right now, like I said, the gears can be repaired. In the, in the demo version, all the gears were destroyed, so that means you, there was a need for continuous uh, farming for fiber. Now there's really a, not a whole lot um, in terms of need for fiber. The only thing that I would probably I, I can think of would be the rug. So if you're into like decorating your base with rug, or you want like a ton of rug for like say the hive mother room, um, then you know do a little bit of uh, fiber farming. But overall, like you can collect fiber easily from like mob drops and crates. So I don't really advise, you know, growing fiber. Especially early game when your skill point is so low, it's not even worth messing with this. So I, I would just leave this alone unless uh, you, you, you have a need for it. Or set up a farm for it, but, you know, somewhere else. But you don't have to, like, go and uh, harvest that uh, unless you need it. Okay, so one of the things that I also want to mention from the, um, the gardening talent here. This first skill is very important. Um, because it it gives you 25% chance to gain a seed when harvesting plants. Now what that means is that when you first start out and you don't have any points in this um, in this talent, you, you start off with roughly about 75% chance of getting the seed back. Okay, that means that you have 25% chance in the, at the very beginning of the game of not getting a seed. So that means like whenever you harvest this plant, it's possible that you get the plants, but you don't get the seed back. And so that means is every time you, you plant, you have like a, a a diminishing return or a slow progression towards not having any seeds at all. And that means your, your farm will be completely uh, depleted uh, and dry of, of any crops. So, and then you have to like go out and, and get more seeds to replace that seed that you lost. So you want to get this up to, to the full 5-5, five, five. and once you do, you don't actually have to go get more seeds anymore um, if you've got enough seeds to completely fill your farm out. So let's let's take a look here. Um, what else can I can I tell you here? So we got the the tools needed, okay, and I explained the, the various seeds, and I explained um, the golden crops, right? So these golden crops right here are stuff that you can get late game by putting in the talent points for this okay and uh, and I explained to you let me to get the watering can out so I explained I had explained to you the uh, watering can doing 20 crops and I explained to you this one doing uh, 60 crops so that that is sort of the basis of my farm design so let me show you my my map here Knowing that I can, I can do twenty plants with one can. I've de I've devised a a farm design where each each farm plot basically has uh, twenty in them, right? And the ways that you can design your your farm plot uh, with with the magic number twenty would be a a farm plot of a four by five. Uh, five by four or two by ten which is what you see here a ten by two which is similar to this except for it's a vertical strip a twenty by one or a one by twenty which is basically a strip of twenty or vertically or horizontally those are your choices basically for the most efficient method of of, uh, of farming all right so why that matters is uh, obviously is that you want to you want to do you want to do each plot one by one, not all of them at once. Okay, so I'll show you what that means in a second here. So here, let me walk you through at least this design here that I have, and the Pafungi seed over here as well. Um, okay, so here you, you can see I've got, you know, rows of two by tens. 
All right, and each one of these, uh, basically, you can plant 20. And here's well, like likewise here. And then if you look at my map, I've got six plots at the top, and I've got six plots here on the side, and six plots here on the side. So this is a total of 18 plots. And from basically my testing so far, uh, you want to uh, to maximize efficiency. You want to have a, pl a plot size. Um, a, a farm design with 15 plots to 18 plots. Those are the rough number of plots that you'll need to efficiently do a full farming loop. Okay, and I'll show you the farming loop in a little bit here once I switch to the other world. But uh, I just wanted to briefly show you the Pafungi plant here because that is new. And that, this is a preview of what you can expect later in your game progression. But right now, this is not something you have access to at the start of the game. And so uh, we won't be including this in our, our farming design once, um, once we do the Let's Play session. So this plant here grows on the mold ground tile. And mold ground tiles come from the mold biome. So once you go in the mold biome, you dig up the ground tile there and you bring it back and you, you place it. It's similar to basically the stone, the stone ground tile where the Kerox only grows on the stone ground. So likewise, the mold, these Pafungi seeds only grow on the mold, mold ground. Now what's a little bit challenging about this um, farm uh, or this ground tile is that if you stand on it, you will get a movement debuff. This will eventually go to 10 max uh, stack. And uh, that means that you'll have like a, a negative 70% movement speed. So it's like minus 7% for each stack. You see how like it, it was like 35 when it was at 5? So a full 10 will slow your character down significantly um, moving across this, this field. So that's the reason why I've also done a 2x10 because you know, if, you, if you're not staying on the ground, then you know, the, the debuff will disappear. So that, that allows you to be outside the outside of the the um, the farm plot itself to harvest. So here I can actually harvest this. Just have to kill all these uh, these fireflies there. But okay, so let's go harvest this and see how I can able I'm able to harvest this outside of the um, the farm plot by standing above it and not get the debuff. I accidentally got the debuff debuff because I walked onto it. All right. So here I can just farm this and then go around to the bottom side and pick this up. Okay, and then the nice thing also about a 2x10 like this is that I actually can stand on the bottom row like this and reach the top easily like this. And then I can just... Oops, I didn't bring my watering can. I'll go over here and take this. And then go and do the watering. And so that way I can just reach the top row easily with this 2 by by 10 design. So if your design was like, like a giant, you know, 5x5, five five, that means you're going to have to step into the Pafungi, um, sorry, the uh, the mold ground tile and get your debuff. So this is one of the reasons why I also do like a 2x10 or a 1x20 is so that I actually don't step into the, the ground tile itself. Now the other thing too for farming is uh, if you remember, I showed you how to bring in water source next to your farm. So you can actually just you know, get the water source from the river. But the other thing that you could do is get these water wells, right, from the uh, Forgotten Ruins, because these things actually, you can break them and then take them back to your base and then replace them onto the onto the ground like this. Um, I, I, I personally don't like using the, uh, the water well too much because you can accidentally break them, similar to accidentally breaking, like, the torch lights while you're farming. Um, so, so, yeah, that's... That's one of the things that I, I just like having a river. All right, so one of the other, other tips and tricks I wanted to point out was that for for your hunger, 
while you're doing your farming, you, you really don't need to eat food. You should just let this bar go down to zero. As long as you're safe in your base and you actually are, are protected. So in my case, I actually protected my base where I have like, you know, the whole base surrounded by water. And so the mobs don't actually come into my base. And for the most part, you don't need to eat. It only affects your combat skills and it reduces your health down to 50%, but it never actually goes below this. So you can actually starve all you want. And this only affects movement speed, health reduction by half, and damage re uh, reduction by 25%. And since you're farming in your base, you're not attacking anything. So if you're not attacking anything, the health really doesn't matter and the attack doesn't really matter. And the only thing that it affects is movement speed. But if you're gonna do farming, you're not gonna be doing a whole lot of movement um, when you're going through your harvesting and your replanting. So that's that's the, um, the reason why you don't wanna just eat during your your farming session and so that also cuts down on your food consumption because you know the, the game constantly nags you about like oh uh, you should eat i'm starving or whatever it is you totally skip that because if you're going to power level your character it's going to it's going to be like a couple of hours to go from like zero gardening to a hundred and uh you don't want to be just constantly eating food during that time because you're constantly consuming it and so that that's totally you know pointless all right so let's go meet me put this back here and i'm gonna switch over to my other character and then i'm gonna show you my farming loop okay and uh well, i guess i can show you briefly also my my other garden here now this doesn't have like an 18 or 15 row but it's just you know it's another way of doing the um the gardening where you can uh, where you can do a one by twenty, and then I have water at the top. So here you'll see like the farming plot. I actually managed to separate the plot to look to look like three different plots because I actually use three different tiles, or sorry, two different two different tile types to separate this. If you use the same tile type, your plot actually will look like one giant plot. But here I was able to make it look like three different strips by using three diff or two different ground types. Okay, and then here I'll show you real briefly the um, the tree farm, right? And this doesn't actually give you any EXPs uh, because you know you don't want to dig up the the root plant itself. But this here basically will will auto harvest the uh, the roots, and then it'll see, watch see how that works. So it auto harvests the roots. And this is the automated arm that will collect the roots and put it in the box for you. And this is very late game, right? See how much like I've collected for free without actually having to harvest or chop down the wood myself. This is very late game and I'll create a video about that in, uh, later on. But for now, I just wanted to show you that briefly on what you can kind of do with your wood farm later. All right, so now let's jump into the, the offline world using my offline character because my offline character actually has um, has a low gardening skill set. Or my gardening level on my, my offline character is pretty low here, enough to show you um, how this loop works and how long it takes roughly to, to power your character out um, or level up your gardening skills. And it's, you know, if, had I showed it to my, on my other character, it's, it's really pointless because he's not going to gain any more EXPs. So I just wanted to show you this um, so I can you know, get some EXPs. I don't have a second gardening hat, but I will go ahead and just wear this the, just so that I can get some extra crops here while using this character. Okay, so for this, for this world, I decided to do vertical strips of 20, right? As for one one design, I I, I was experimenting with different um, farm designs so I can figure out like which one is the best uh, in terms of efficiency. And here I have just a separate, you know, um, farm area for the uh, pafungi, and I don't have enough pafungi seeds to fill this out. So that is, is something that. That I've got as a, on the side where I won't actually include that in my loop 
from, for the farming loop. And I'll explain to you what the farming loop does in a second here. Alright. Now, um, this here, I've got rows of, of farms 2x10s, similar to that other uh, world that you saw. So this is my first design, was I started doing the, the rows of, of 2x10s. Okay, and then... And, and as I explained to you, you can do 4x5s, right? This is an example of a 4x5, right? And I don't have a whole lot of Karok seeds on this character. And this is another 4x5, and these are the fiber plants. The, um, the grub kapunk. Okay, that's, that's the uh, fiber seed. So I could include this in my loop, or I, I, uh, if I want to, or I can just leave it out of my loop. So what do I mean by, by farming loop? All right, so as, as an example, um, let me get my watering can. Okay, I'll show you, I'll get the, I'll use this one, that's fine. I'll take this ring off. Okay, so the farming method that I use is basically take a watering can and then leave, you know, let's, we can stick that in the first slot if we want here and then leave the second slot open, right? And now, so long as you, you have the seeds, um, the one plot to be the same seed, it will always go here, right? So long as you don't mix two different seed types on the, on the same plot, then uh, you'll be fine. So this, this will work pretty well here. So here, I'm gonna start this, right? So here, you'll take a look. I'm at 44. Right, so I'm gonna go through all this. This is my gardening loop right now. I'm gonna show you. So this gardening loop here, you want to go through one patch first, right? And as soon as you you finish one patch, just go ahead and immediately replace it and water it. Okay, you don't want to go, you don't want to go through all your entire um, farm plots all at once because that's not very efficient. All right, this is this is the most efficient way to do it. Okay, and I'm going through this one at a time, one plot at a time, and making sure I'm always re refilling it, replenishing it, um, right, replanting it immediately, one at a, one plot at a time. And so here, you see how it, it always drops into the first or the second slot in the first empty slot there. So this is the most efficient way to go through your 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 farming loop right just by doing one plot at a time and the reason why you want to go through this one at a time is because by the time you finish your eight your 15th or 18th uh, farming plot the first plot will be ready to go and that's why we call this well why I'm calling this the farming loop because this will be ready by the time you finish your your round and then you can just loop right back. So you don't really need more than 18 plots um, because otherwise it's just it's just waste. You'll have like plots that will never actually get harvest if you keep going back and forth between the ones that are ready. So here I'm just gonna go through this loop. Continue my harvest. Okay, see how like I already got, I, I leveled up from 44 to 45 and I just went through like one, two, three, four. Uh, four plots. At the start of the game, it, it actually only it only takes uh, fifteen harvests, fifteen plant harvests, to level up from zero to one. And then after zero, from zero to one, one to two takes sixteen plants. And it does sixteen for a little bit, and then eventually it requires seventeen, and then eventually it requires eighteen to go up level. So what what what's happening here is the game does have a a, um, a diminishing return on your harvest, or rather, the the EXP requirement gets significantly longer or harder as you get closer towards 100. So from from zero to one, it doesn't require a whole lot to level up, but at like 99 to 100, it it requires a whole lot more uh, plant harvest, going from 99 to 100. So that's something to keep in mind: is that the loop. Uh, helps you out continuously and you just keep track of it. So over time you'll eventually notice like okay It's it's adding like another another extra plot. So later 
we might it might only take four plots to, to level up, but eventually it's gonna take five plots. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So we'll that last one took four, and so we'll see how many how many harvests it takes. How many plots it takes for us to to get to the next level. It'll probably it'll probably be four, could be five, because it does progressively get longer. Okay, so here it was like one, two, three, and then I went to refill. One, two, three, and I just refill, right? And so I've I've designed the the plots to be an even number for refills required. And it's it's in multiples of threes right now. Or three patches. Or th sorry, three three farms. So this next one, after this next one, I will have to refill. Or sorry, after this that last one, because we went through and we did six. Okay, and so now we refill. So like I said, is like, you know, if the game's nagging to eat, don't worry about eating. It's not important. Okay, that's another loop. And then you just uh, go to the uh, the third slot and plant and then water. And you just repeat this. Uh, doing patch by patch. Okay, and I'll explain that in a little second here. So gardening went up. It only took. So it went up another, another bit here. But that actually was a half a slot, right? So let's see here. We went. It took us four. One, two, three, four. And then now it took one, two, three, four. And it's like four and a half, All right? So four and a half. Um. In terms of uh, getting the next skill point up. So it it went up by by basically half half a row. So I, I'm expecting probably the next one will be either four and a half again or five uh, farm plots. Now we just did one one harvest row there, so keep that in mind. Okay. And we're gonna go through this. Now keep in mind that I started at 40, 44. It's very it's different for you guys because you guys if you guys are starting out at zero or or lower it won't take very long for you to level up. But I just demonstrated that it does take you know it does require more to level up each time. Each time you go up a level. Just finished one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that should have should have been using this, but I think I I might have refilled that on the oh, earlier accidentally. Oops, I clicked on the wrong one. I accidentally drank my potion now, but let me go ahead and do this. So this is 12 plots right here. And we're gonna go 12, 13, 14, 15, and the other one's 16.
Okay, this one I just did it at a 4x5 just to, as a test. Uh, it is it is reasonably efficient in the sense that you don't, you don't have to move a whole lot. You only have to stand in the middle here to go like this and then tap over to do to do to do the uh, the other half or the other row the last row here so you only have to like stand here cover all four and tap and then cover the last row so this this is not a bad design either um, it's just gonna end up taking more space by doing this if you want to space out like the, uh, the columns. And the reason I have these little columns, or sorry, these gutters, is because I need light source. And so I use the gutters to separate the plots, and I also use gutters to put light in them as well. But, the, you know, a, a 4x5 is, is okay. It's not the most efficient, though. Um, I mean, you don't have to move as much. But it's it's definitely not the best because you do want to also do some running now and then, right? To be able to to get some running skills. And plus, this is not doesn't work very well for when you actually do the Pafungi um, garden, right? Let me take this water here. But this is not terribly bad. You you could do. You could do a 4x5. The only difference with a 4x5 is that your water placement, right? So you have a bunch of 4x5 plots. You're going to have to figure out how to set up like a, a water placement, like a gutter of water here and then a gutter of water somewhere else. With the rows, the water was actually right next to you like this. Right. So let's check up on the first plot to see if our... Our plant's done yet. Okay, it's not. So now we're gonna go look at this one. That's why I, I say 18 is the best for the loop. And so my first, my uh, Twitch world, I have actually 18 plots. All right. I think there's a little bug right there in the watering. Yeah, that little, I don't know what happened there. Okay, it's watering. And so by the time you, well, this is 12, 13, 14, 15, I, I actually don't have the rest of this. So it will, it would, it would normally, yeah, see now it's, it's just enough. Okay, so 12, 13, 14, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I went through 16, 16 plots, and now I actually go right back to the first one with no downtime. All right, you having anything more than 18 would be a completely uh, wasteful because waste of space, um, as well as as a waste of time, because you'll never actually get to it. Um, or get to it fast enough. Because right, by the time I finish this, the next one will be ready, right? So I'm going to go through this. And the next one after that will be ready. So it really depends on how, how fast you go through your plots, of course. And because I'm talking to you guys while I'm doing this, you know, I'm not being super efficient. But once you get, you know, once you get the rhythm down, you'll see that the, the farming loop here basically allows you to continuously farm and then harvest uh, replant right and then the next one will be available as soon as you finish this one right? and then I also have that middle row as a backup um, because I was just messing with it so because I don't have the uh, the extra care rock um, I couldn't show you the extra, the extra uh, two patches that makes up for 18. Okay, now I'm gonna plant this. And so by the time I finish this, this next one should be done. 
Right, and this one will be the water. Yeah, we're on the third one. Okay, it's not. All right, so we we can, we can go through this one then. Normally, I would have a full 18, and I don't have a full 18 right now. Because of the two missing patch. And you see how that, that started popping up? So ideally, you want like a full 18 patch to get the full farming loop effect going. So now, I can go through this. explain to you why this is actually the best way to do it instead of like going through it all at once. Okay. See how like that one is, is ready? So you know if I go through all this, do the rounds, the next one will be ready. Now okay so the reason why it's it's better to do it patch by patch versus like a full sweep. Right, so let's say like, you know, it's it's tempting. I mean, I made the mistake first when I first played the game was doing a full sweep, right? A full sweep would mean that I would I would jump jump in, harvest everything here, right? And then come back, do the planting, and then come back and then doing doing the watering, right? So you do a full sweep of plant or harvesting, then you do a full sweep of planting, then you do a full sweep of of watering. That is actually the worst method for for farming because you're you're gonna have downtime. By the time you do your full sweep of watering, you're gonna be sitting around waiting for all the crops to be ready for harvest. Right? So you spent all that time planting, you spent all that time watering, but during that time nothing was actually growing, right? Because you didn't do your watering yet. So if you did a full sweep, you're not actually growing anything, right? until you actually start watering. So the watering process then takes, it takes about 10 minutes for a plant to grow. So that's why if you can do it patch by patch, so let's say it takes like roughly about one minute, a little less than one minute. That's why I'm going for like, you know, say 18. So let's say if you did it like in, in 30 seconds, right? Roughly, uh, well, it'd be a little bit more than 30 seconds, right? So if you, if, if you think you can do this in 30 seconds, then I'd say get a get like 20 patches, right? The 18 patches is is or sorry, 21 patches, right? Because because you want to do like in multiples of threes, right? 20 21 is is divided by three is seven, and the reason why multiples of threes is so that you can actually line up or time up your watering can, right? So every the watering can will take will will basically water three patches. So you only have to like refill seven times with with 20 pat or sorry, 20 plots, right? So with a with an 18 plot, you only have to refill your watering can six times. And the way I have it here is supposed to be 18, right? This is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, but I'm missing two right here. And I was I was compensating using this row over here. These or these two rows over here. Or that one row. I haven't used the second one yet because because the downtime here is I'm actually talking to you guys. So that that basically allows the plants to to finish growing here. Okay. But yeah, this is the um, the farming loop. Make sure that you always you always plant and water, plant and water, and go from plot to plot. Make your, your full 18 rounds or 21 if you, you're really fast at doing this. Right? If you if it looks like you know 18 um, still has downtime, then then start doing using 21. Right? And that way you don't actually have any downtime. Now, 
from my experience on the most efficient farming method uh, is actually the strips, the vertical strips. Because later in the game, once you have like golden crops and you actually want to avoid accidentally hitting a row uh, in terms of harvesting a row, the vertical crop, the vertical strips are actually the best way to do the farming. And I'll show you in a little bit later. So you see how like all this is now done as I'm going through this. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you in a second here. And we're just you know continuously doing this, and we're gonna get up to like another level here soon. And that's all you have to do is just um, do your farming loop through 18 plots or 21 if you if you you know if you're really really fast. And it won't take long to get up some levels here. So all I did was, you know, go through my loot, and that's how I ended up getting to level 21. Or sorry, level 100. Um, with my um, my gardening skills. Let's take a look here. 49, so yeah, I'm about to hit 50 very soon here. Yeah, about, so this next patch will probably get me 50. Alright, so here is low. So let's say I go through all of this. Alright, and I go through all of this. This one will will be ready. And then that this row here will be ready after that. And then it just loops back again. And then these row will be ready. Alright, so that's the farming loop. And this strip right here, this is the really the most efficient way to do it. Now let's say like, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you like why this strip really works and you only need like one one row of, of water here. Okay, so if I go down this way, all right, so this works really well because I'm just hitting my down key and, and that's it. And I, I attack. Okay. And then I plant. I go back up. I plant. So you don't need like a strip of water at the bottom. Right? Because I'll show you here. You don't actually have to run back up either to get water. So the, the, the way this works is that you you, you farm, you, you plant, you water, and you get your you refill once you loop back up. And I'll show you here in a second here. Where you don't actually run back up to get water. You do it on your your last pass. And this, this one strip here, or this plot here, works really well. Um, with one can, one large can. Okay, now I go like this. Okay, now you, you see how it's empty, right? But you don't actually need to refill it down here. You just start from the bottom up here. And then refill it when you get back up. So that's why you only need like one, one strip. So you go up, you water, or refill. Okay, and then you go like this. So I really like the vertical, and this is—I found this to be actually the most efficient way to do the farming, not the um, the horizontal strips. And this also works really well for the fungi if you um, 
if you choose to incorporate the, f the fungi into into your design by using the middle row only, like this. Right. But I, I decided to stick it on the side here for, for this this world. But I did realize that it's it's possible to include it. Okay, so at any point in time you notice like I didn't actually have to run back up to get water. I just got it got my water on the on the pass up. Or or on the right before the pass down. Okay. See how like I've managed to always get, collect water at the top for each patch or each uh, plot without actually having to run back up for the water. I just use my water as I go, but I always refill it when it's empty. Exactly on 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 cue. Okay. So let's say had I had I done like 18 strips of this or 21 strips of this, it would be perfect because I can actually just go up and down, up and down, and then run back to the very beginning. Like this. Oops, I accidentally <laughs> rolled my mouse over there. So the size of the plot um, should dictate how you design your farm, right? In the even numbers of 20s, right, or 60s, right? So here I would have normally gone straight down like this. Had I not popped that other row accidentally, I would have gotten the seed like right in that row. Okay, all this. And then I refill my water. See, even though it's it's empty, I don't need to refill it yet, right? Because I'm not having to use it. I refill it on my pass up after I do a harvest. Like this. And see how like I've never had to run back up. Okay, and then this will go like this. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the, the last two rows here, but you guys got get the idea, right? I'm gonna refill it. So you guys get the idea that if you have like strips like this, you can go up and down the rows. Okay, now what else? Um, okay, oh yes, so the other tips that I have for you um, before I, I, I talk about, you know, the the let's play part. The um, At the very early part of the game, the plants that you guys want to to do planting on will be the um, the seeds that you do not have um, a whole lot of or you don't want to plant seeds that you don't have a whole lot of because your your skill points is very low right your harvest chance so save all the plants that you you don't have a whole lot of that's rare right out of your farming loop Right. For, for for example, here is like if you if for a beginner, you don't have the um, put points in this. For a beginner, when you have zero points in this or you don't max out on this, that means you have a chance of losing seeds. So you want to plant seeds that you have a ton of that drops a significant amount of, which is the heart berries and the bomb peppers. So you don't want to like waste say the care rocks in your in your farming loop if you're not maxed out. On, on your gardening because you're gonna lose your Karak seeds, right? So that's that's something to, and I'll, I'll go I'll mention that in a little bit when we do our, our let's play through. Um, that was one of the tip that I, I wanted to give you is that don't use rare seeds until you get five uh, five out of five on this. Otherwise, you'll start losing your rare seeds over time. 
Um, and then the other tip would be how to get your strips to look like this. Well, you want to just use different um, different ground types, right? And then I'll show you another tip to clear out. Let's see here to do doing the hoeing. Let's see here if I have any extra bonds. I kind of do have extra bonds here. But I'm not sure if my alt has extra bonds, but we'll see. All right, so this next part of the video, I'm gonna do the let's play of my new character, or my new, new YouTube character on my YouTube world. So if you guys don't wanna see how things are done from scratch, or you know, you, you can totally skip this. But you might pick up some tips because I'm gonna give throw out some tips while we're doing this. All right, so I'm gonna use my my YouTube character. Okay, and then now we're going to do the farming. Okay, let's see if I actually have any bombs here. I forgot. I do have one bomb I can demonstrate because I, I I prefer I'm I'm not into using bombs. And the other thing I can show you too as as a trick to clear out stuff is using the the grub zuka. Right. Rub Zuka is actually pretty useful. Alright, so let's so the first thing you want to do is decide where you want to do your 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 plants. And I think I'm gonna use this strip here. And I'll do I'll do um I'll do the uh, I'll do the verticals. Okay. And I personally like to mess with the ground tiles. Um, let's see here. Do I have enough ground tiles? I have like 141. I did slightly get this offline from the uh, other character. And I have some, some clay as well. But I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so... So here, okay. So one of the things that... Uh, you, you want to know about the seeds, right? As a, as a tip, how to get seeds. And that's the reason why I, um, I did the video guide for the AFK mob farm first, uh, instead of using or doing the farming guide, it was because I wanted to show you how you can go get seeds, right? So how do you get seeds? Well, if, if you have a AFK mob farm, you can collect them from your mob farm. Or you can go kill, you can go kill some slimes. Seeds drop from from slimes or larvas, right? In the late game, they, they do drop from the gardeners, the caveling gardener, the pafungi. And then in the late game, they also drop from like the flowers that you can smash in the uh, Azios' wilderness. But in the early game, you don't, you know, you can't access that biome. So the best way is through, through through either through either the uh, killing the larvas or killing the slimes or your AFK farm where you've got it set up with the, um, the spike trap that auto kills them okay or the other trick for getting seeds let me go ahead and eat some of this because we might actually run out of I might actually have to cook some food here. Okay, so the other trick is to collect your seeds from Glorm's pathway. So here I'm gonna go there. Or, I mean, you can go around, explore, and hunt for the seeds. Like here, you know, the shinies, right? So this is the other way to get the seeds. And you already know this from my, my uh, b b the first episode of the Beginner's Guide. Or you've already figured it out by now that you can actually just harvest this. Alright, you can harvest that. You can get your seeds. Alright, they, they have a chance to, to drop seeds because, because my character is not invested in this. I only have a 75% chance of getting a seed. So if I don't get a seed, it's probably because it landed on. Now, us usually when you dig up the the buried treasure, they also have a chance to drop seeds as well. Um, but yeah, since I don't have any points in gardening right now, or this talent right here, I only have 
75% chance of getting seeds back or from 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 breaking one of those um, those random plants in the wild. So we're going to go to Glorm's Path so that I can show you how we can just walk along this path and try to find seed drops. Usually there's a bunch of seeds along this path because Glorm will kill most of the... Oh yeah, there's something here too. He'll kill most of the um, the mobs here. And right now there aren't any, which is really odd here. There's usually a... Um, Usually, like, there's a good bunch of seeds along this path. Or you, or you kill slimes, basically. Alright, slimes are ba really the best source of getting the seeds. But I was hoping to, to get seeds off of, like, the... Oh, hey, wow, we got a lot of... Care rock seeds here. Oh no. I need to get the hell out of here. Oh no. Oh no. I don't think I brought any potions with me. Yeah, there are usually um, a ton of seeds here when Glorm goes through this path. But if you play long enough, I, I actually haven't spent a whole lot of time playing, right? Because you notice, I've um, I've been mainly doing short videos here. All right. Well, usually if you run along this path, you can get a lot of seeds. If Glorm runs through and he kills all the um, the slimes for you. They generally leave like a, a trail of, of seeds along this path. But we're getting some nice Karox. So I'm okay with that. Let me run back here and we'll, we'll build the uh, We'll build the uh, the farm. And then I'll show you how you can also use the uh, bazooka to clear out the walls for your farm. Let's see here, do we have enough seeds? I don't think we have enough seeds. Maybe, I mean, I could probably use some seeds off of my my um, my alt because it ha I have no use for the seeds all right well let's clear this out because I don't I, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this farm here oh hey our gardening went out okay so let's take a look here oh yeah I brought in some seeds for my alt here so I do have some seeds to start with so we can go with that I got some new Karak seeds Okay, so here, I want my, I want the start of my farm. I guess I'll start it right here. Right. So here I want to do a row. And I, do, I need like, what, 20? So I'm going to start off with 20 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I don't know, I need to recount because I missed it. Huh. Okay. Let's 
Let's see here. So I want to do 20 here, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and this is 20, and this is the, the border right here. All right, so that's the border. And then uh, I'll fill it up. Let's go ahead and fill this up. Okay. And then I do want, well, I need to run that up. So I'll do that in a second here. fill this out outer edge with green because I like to have a green border around my thing let's go ahead and clear this out and I want this strip right here to be my water strip And I'm being cheap because I should create, I should craft, I should craft my shovel. Okay, but okay, so here I'm just gonna do some some mining here to clear this out. But I'll show you in a little bit that what you what you can do instead of that. If you wanted to quickly get through all those, you can actually use the bazooka. Do that. Let's put torches here in these corners. Let me switch to this. And remove this. And I think what I'll do is I'll do I'll do um I'll do, uh, I'll do 18 plots and see how it goes. Because I think 18 plots should be fine. Okay, let me take this out. Let me take this out. Oops. Oops. Oh my gosh, all that goes in my base. <laughs> That's fine. I want to run this all the way up to the top. All right. And I want I want that right there to be my water source. Okay. Temporary I save that there. I can refill this or totally seal this off. Well, actually, I yeah, me... hmm. Okay, so let me show you like a quick, um, quick tip here. Let's see, if we got. I think we got some iron here, right? brought in some iron. Let me put my chest back down. Because you want like a little gardening chest here. Maybe we'll put the little food here and we'll do we'll work on the food stuff next time. But here I can put my gardening chest. Let me put all the seeds here for now. Get that out of the way. Sort this. Wooden shovel. Okay. Let me put my table down so I can repair this because we're gonna we're gonna need to do a lot of repairing here in a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 
if you see this right here, right? You see how like all this is like one rectangle? Well, how do you get it to be like separated, right? So I can show you. If you use clay, and clay lets you actually um, plant on uh, as well as dirt. I mean, you use the green tiles, which is like the grass turf. You can use the dirt ground tile, or you can use like the clay ground tile. You can't grow on sand, right? So sand will not work. I mean, you can use like sand to decorate the out outer edge if you wanted to as well. But so here, if you use clay, this is the other trick to make your your farm plot look different. And actually have strips. All right, and let's go ahead and get the, the copper hoe that we got at the beginning of the game. Or no, yeah, here we go. And ideally, you're gonna probably just want, since for this, for this, we're gonna want like just the the iron because we're gonna be doing a lot of this. But we can always repair it. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, see how like the strip is totally different now, and we don't have a rectangle. So this lets you be able to make your, your plots look unique and separate from each other. And so you can actually visually tell that they're not not in the same plot. But I mean you, you already know it's it's strips of strips of three. So this whole plot right here itself. Um will work with one watering can. Like that. Okay. Now we can actually fill this up over here. Because we got our water ship up up to the top. I'm gonna finish this design with you guys, but if you don't want to watch the rest of this playthrough, um, you don't have to. You, I gave you most of the gist at the beginning of the game, or the beginning of the video. So here, let's go. Um, I'm gonna craft. I'm gonna craft that bazooka. I think I have enough, right? I also have lava meat, right? Um, what you can do with that is take this. And what I've been told that you can actually do this to clear out all your your tiles for you instead of digging it, right? So let's go with let's try this. Okay, if you read the description of this thing, right, it says the heavy shots from the grubzuka also makes it tear down any dirt, sand, and turf walls in its path, right? So. Right, so if you didn't want to like do any of the clearing, you can use the, the Grubzuka. Now I do want to get some mining skills. But let's say if you if you wanted to be a little bit efficient and, and just clear through all your, your dirt really fast, go like this. And so that it just totally shoots through all this all this stuff. Right See how he just totally goes through and clears it out? So this is a way to do like fast, fast clearing. Let's just use a good, well you got it's better to stand like right in the middle. All right, so if you didn't want to like do any of the, the mining it yourself, you can use the, the uh, Grubzooka. So here. Alright, so we can, we got all that really fast. But the mining's not terribly bad. I, I at least get mining skills. Well, I just wanted to show you the, the Grubzooka. Alright, so let's go ahead and clear this up. And I'm probably just gonna make a I'm just gonna make my I'm gonna make my um 
my shovel. Iron shovel here. What does it need? One gold bar. And what's this need? One gold bar? Okay, I think we've got gold bars. One, two. So I'm gonna get rid of. What else? Oh, wait, did I not? Ugh, I keep forgetting. Every time I do that, I forget to um, take it off the, the bar. Alright, so I'm gonna go do the iron hoe. Iron shovel. Alright, so this is useful. And then we're gonna scrap this. I'm gonna use the regular hoe first. And then we're gonna scrap that too later. Let's go with this. Oops, let's go strip this down. So I guess I'll just do this these strips to show you. And I'll finish this later on. Because uh, this video is kind of getting a little long now. I don't want to run over an hour and a half here in this playthrough because I actually spent a lot of time showing you the, the farming loop but I think you got the idea though from this video the tricks on this okay well, one of the other thing too is the um, the other trick I wanted to show you, let's see if we have any, oh yeah, we do have one bomb here. Okay, cool, so the hoeing, all that, right, you can actually use bombs to speed up your hoeing process. You see that, how that, so if you had like a lot of extra bombs that you found, you can actually use the bombs. To do your um, your hoeing, and you don't you don't have to like use the the actual hoe itself. And I usually have like a ton of ton of bombs, the, the little bombs that I don't use at all. Um, so if you've, you've got you know if you got a lot, a lot of little extra bombs, you can do that. I don't I don't like personally wasting resources crafting bombs. Um, because it, it does require you to, to spend some resources. And I, I don't use, normally use bombs for my, my gameplay. I mean, you could use bombs for, for the Gorm boss. And I'll, I'll show you that in another video once we get to that. And one of the reasons why I don't, I don't kill Gorm is because I actually like to collect dirt tiles, dirt ground tiles from Glorm, and I actually demonstrated that to you, oops, in my last playthrough, or my, uh, the, my mob farm uh, video, so here we got a nice little strip, and then we're going to stick this here, and we're going to stick this here, so now this makes it like a really nice farm the gutter is basically used for the torches and then you got the, like the nice little three strip because we use the the clay dirt right so now we, we we're gonna do some planting so my recommendation is right not to use the care rocks right until you actually reach until you actually reach uh, this oh hey look we did reach 
well, no, we, until you actually reach five out of five, right? Because now you still you still have like a a twenty percent chance of losing seeds, right? So so early in the in the game, if you're collecting, you know, fiber and you're you've got care rocks, you don't have a whole lot of these. I do have a lot extra fiber here, so I could probably grow that. But I recommend just using a lot of these two seeds early on until you hit until you hit like a full full five out of five and then you can start using these other seeds here because you may lose your seeds and very early on you might not have this many seeds i actually brought in seeds from my other character onto this world um that's how i end up getting all that but you guys at the very start of the game, you wouldn't be able to have that many seeds to go with your farming. Um, you have to go out and actually gather them, either through Glorm's path that we went through. Um, I wouldn't do it early on like uh, well, I did because I don't have enough playtime on this world for him to like leave trails. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to point out for for the uh, root farm or tree farm is that in the very beginning I had mentioned that, oh, you know, you don't want to use your sword to to go through your root farm because of durability. Well, I was wrong, actually. Um, using your sword and attacking the roots um, is the best way to chop, chop them down because, uh, one, they actually do not affect your durability, but two, you don't, you don't actually accidentally uproot the, the plants. You see how, like, if you want to go through your tree farms and uh, and collect your, your roots, or sorry, your wood, just use your sword. Because if you use your pickaxe or anything else, you will ac accidentally uproot the, the, the root seed itself. And then you'll have to, like, redo the, the farming, like, the watering and everything, and the planting. So, using the sword... You don't, you don't actually hit the torch, you don't actually hit the plant itself, but you do clear out all the wood. And, you can see how the, um, the durability does not change at all. It does not affect durability. Alright, so 1.9. Yeah, normally when you, when you attack something and it hits, you waste durability. Or when you shoot with your, your slingshot, you waste durability. But in this case, it's actually okay. To clear um, your wood farm with your sword. So that that that's another thing I wanted to point out. Okay, so let's go back and um, and do the farming. So we do have a lot of of berries. And we do have a lot of bot peppers. And so as I said, you want you want to just use those early on. And try to keep like one plant on the same plot, right? At the at the start of the game, you you know you don't have the luxury, um, so you you'll you'll have to mix them, right? So start off small, mix them if you need to, or do them in separate like plots, and then use that little strategy I showed you about leaving one of the slots open. For now, you know, we're just going to go through all of them like this because I have the actual plants. Um, okay, yeah, I mean that's that's about it. You mean I don't want to go over the video for too long. So that's all I wanted to show you was the um, the strategy, right? So go down strip by strip and. Uh, Figure out like you know how many how many uh, plots that you need. I estimate around fifteen to eighteen is a good decent size. If you think you're really fast at, at going down and watering this, and then you end up having downtime after you finish your eighteenth uh, strip, and you're sitting around waiting for this, add three more. They'll they'll end up you know going to, to twenty one, so eighteen plus three. And then come back to see if you have any more downtime. If you don't have any more downtime, 
and you can actually go through all the, the your farming loop and by the time you finish your 18 and you come back here and this is ready then you're, it's fine if it's not then do 821 and then your farming loop comes back after your 21 plot you come back this is ready then that means you've got a perfect farming loop and that will allow you to continuously level up your gardening to 100 by just going through all the, the strips and then looping back and remember you want to do it one strip at a time right so the first time first time you know you don't have any any seeds so it's okay to go through all of this like this right um but the but once once all the plants are done and you harvest right you want to you want to like re replant them and rewater them strip by strip so that you get your little farming loop going and then you just power level your your gardening from there and that's it for this video so thank you for for watching um hopefully you've you've picked up something new today and uh if i missed anything feel free to leave in the comments if any found any other tips that you guys want to share or want me to share uh be happy to to read some of the comments for for any other tips let me read my notes here to see if I got any, if I left anything out. I think that's it, right? Mentioned the durability. All the two tools, yeah, okay. All right, well, thanks for, um, for watching, and uh, I will catch you next time uh, where we'll, we might be talking about the cooking. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys.